What you are about to hear is highly classified. Welcome back to The Zone. I'm Brant Fowler, co-host and co-founder of The Zone 4 Podcast. If you're not familiar with Zone 4, it's a weekly roundtable podcast um, talking comics, movies, TV, and pop culture in general. And uh, this is the uh, sample trailer kind of thing for episode number 192, which went live this week. We go uh, live, or our episodes go live every week on Friday. Uh, for over three and a half years now, we've never missed an update. And uh, if you're familiar with this channel, you know that we used to do trailers uh, for the episodes each week, but uh, eh, life happened, and uh, I didn't have time to do that anymore. But uh, I'm going to try to do that now, and uh, I'll give you a video intro each week, and then you'll get a sampling of the show here uh, on the uh, Zone 4 Podcast YouTube channel. And then, uh, in addition to that, uh, well, first let me say that these uh, samples will come out on Saturdays. So uh, if you haven't gotten a chance to listen to the show on Friday yet, you can listen to the sample, see if it's an episode you're interested in, and then go download it, uh, download the full episode from uh, the usual channels, uh, zone4podcast.com, comicrelated.com, uh, via, our, via our Facebook page or iTunes. Um, but there's a new place that you'll be able to find it on Sundays. Uh, we will be posting the entire episode each week to Dark Avenger Inks. YouTube channel. Uh, you may be, uh, you may know that I have started doing weekly videos over at Dark Avenger Inc. Uh, my first uh, review of Shadow Man number one went up this week on Thursday, so uh, you can check my videos out over there every single week, um, and you can hear the entire episode of Zone Four on Dark Avenger Inc. every Sunday. Um, and we're going to start doing more with this particular channel as well. I don't know what, but stay tuned for that. Anyway, on to this week's episode. Uh, this week, Ron, Gordon, John, and myself talk about uh, February 2013 solicitations, because they all came out this week. So we went through the solicitations for Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, IDW, and Aspen to uh, see which books caught our interest. So we talk about those a little bit. And uh, then we talk about the ending of Hellblazer uh, with issue number 300 in February. And that kind of spurs a discussion on uh, if there are some titles that work better outside of a cohesive universe, or if it really matters at all. So it's a very inter interesting discussion this week on that. Plus, uh, we do have our new listener drive going on. Um, it started last week with episode 191, and there will be a link in the, in the notes below where you can get all the details on that. Um, but basically, you have to listen. If you're a new listener, or if you know somebody you can recommend the show to, um, all you have to do is gather three keywords from episode 191, 192, and next week's 193, and then send that entire three word phrase to us at zone4comicrelated.com, and you will get. A very special prize, which is a 48-page digital comic uh, collecting some classic stories of various genres. Um, these are all uh, public domain stories, so it's it's a really cool collection that uh, Gordon has put together for us. So it's you know it's a real treat. Uh, if you love classic comics, uh, you're going to really enjoy this. Um, and then we'll do it again for the next three episodes, and then the three after that. Uh, so, um, like I said, all the details are in the notes below. And of course, we do more Facebook shoutouts and more plugs on, on things that we have coming up or, or coming out or going on. So, uh, without further ado, here's a sample of episode 192 of Zone 4. Topic, 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 topic time! It's topic time! Yay! Alright, so. For the topic this week, of course, we've we've all mentioned uh, Vertigo and Hellblazer, and that's where we're going to start with, um, because I guess the big news for this past week is that Hellblazer is getting canceled at issue number 300, and that's not even the big news. The big news is not only are they canceling it, but they're taking him to the New 52 main universe and launching a John Constantine title. Ooh, yeah. Oh God! Ooh. Yeah, and that's that's what's got everybody a buzz. And of course, there's been a lot of comments and and so on and so forth. But uh, first, let me uh, let me just read you the solicitation for the 300th issue 
Um, it's the heart-wrenching conclusion of Death and Cigarettes and the end of Vertigo's longest-running series. John Constantine has escaped, cheated, narrowly avoided, and even reversed death on multiple occasions over the past 25 years. Now we will test whether the old boy has one more second chance in him. Don't miss this epic, oversized special issue celebrating everything that makes John Constantine so bloody unique. So, John. Yes. <laughs> Why don't you kick us off here? I, I didn't read uh, about the new series. Did they give much information about that one? Not really. They're, okay. they're kind of keeping it to themselves. Yeah. Um, other than, you know, I mean, you know, let's... Let's start out with the the cancellation first. Sure. Um, you know the brilliant idea behind the cancellation because, sure, let's take our longest running title, mm-hmm. our longest running and most popular title, and cancel it. Sure. Brilliant. <laughs> brilliant idea. Let's do that. You know. It's kind of a trend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly. Um, there are people, and actually we all know a person, who are religious about John Constantine. Mm-hmm. Who live and die on John Constantine. And um, it's just kind of ridiculous that they would take a title that is not only still successful at 300, I mean in this industry. Right. It's a different thing, you know, back you know when Superman and Batman and all that hit 300. That's a different deal. Well, I mean, because you know, that's a different time. Yeah, even even beyond that, though, I mean, this isn't a superhero title, which right. makes the makes the uh, um, the uh, accomplishment even that more unique. Right. So. Well, well, that and you know, um, the fact that it is a it's a definite kind of I wouldn't call it a fringe title, but it's a, it's a definite title that really have to be into that sort of thing you know it's it's a i guess you'd call it a well not even pseudo it's a definite hard horror title um it's definite title that kind of pushes and makes you extend your thoughts and beliefs on things you know it's a title that that challenges you to not only, you know, accept that particular universe, but also kind of look at your own universe and go, okay, what, you know, where are the parallels here and all that? So, you know, taking that away, uh, taking the history. I mean, you know, John Constantine has touched several other stories within the DC universe. And that, they're sort of just wiping all that away. So you wipe away uh, Swamp Thing's anatomy lesson right off the bat there, which is considered by a lot of people to be the, you know, quintessential Swamp Thing title or quintessential Swamp Thing issue. Uh, You kind of wipe away the whole birth of Teffy. Uh, You wipe away that whole thing that they were doing back in the day where – they were writing intelligent, thought-provoking stories like they were in, in Sandman, Animal Man, um, you know, back when it was an early vertical title. Sandman, you know, all those books like that. All the, the others kind of came to their own end, but Hellblazer kept going. Why? Because it's a consistently good book. Now, for no other reason than they want to try something new, they're going to shit can it, which is ridiculous. You know, it just makes no bloody sense whatsoever. Uh, if it had been because of sales, I would have said, okay, I get it, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But it's not. It's a, it is a trick. It is a hype. You know, um, and technically, they already brought him into the New 52 universe in Justice League Dark. Right. Does, to which... Does, no, go ahead. I was just going to ask, does anyone know how well that title is doing? Um, I quit reading it. I don't know about <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but, you know, and, you know, as, uh, as our friend Chuck said, that's not my job. Mm-hmm. Um, just because it's not... You know, it's not the John Constantine 
that we know and love. It's this other thing. So to kind of do that and to pull, you know, to, to put away the decent adult, adult as in intelligent, not adult as in mouth check a mouth mouth, um, you know, story and to, then to bring this diluted thing in into uh, the new 52 is just pathetic. I, I think it's I think it's not only sad, but it's kind of a slap in the face of that kind of reader. Mm-hmm. You know, is it, there there are people who would only read the Vertigo books. Yeah. You know, or only read stuff like Constantine and Sandman and stuff like that. Sure. Um, you know, and I think it's kind of a slap in the face to that kind of reader that, you know, Constantine's going to pop up and – in in the regular New 52, and he's going to end up battling these, like, third-rate Batman villains or something. Mm-hmm. You know, he's going to end up having to deal with a bug-eyed bandit or some crap like that. So, <laughs> so, you know. so yeah, let, 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 me ask, let me ask you guys this, in lieu of something that, that I, I found out this past week uh, in regards to Vertigo, okay, uh, which, which blindsided me, and I was not aware of it. Uh, and, and maybe you guys already are aware of this. Uh, let me pass it along. Uh, you know, one, one of the better selling, uh, mystery thrillers, uh, in literature, uh, universally across the globe in the last couple of years has been the Stig Larsson, uh, trilogy. And we, you know, we've already seen this, the Swedish versions of Girl with the Green Tattoo and, uh, the Dragon Tattoo, excuse me. Right. And the, the subsequent sequels, and then they went and made the English uh, version with uh, Daniel Craig. So I'm, I'm online this week, and what do I find? But uh, a notice from a friend of mine that Vertigo has just released a hardback graphic novel based on Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, I took a step back and I went, what? And I had seen no releases about this, no news about this. So I went to the site to check it out where it's available. I mean, they're selling it for 20 bucks. Like I said, it's a hardback graphic novel. The, the woman who adapted it is supposedly a famous uh, mystery writer in her own right. There's a few pages of sample artwork uh, with the news release. It looks really good. And I'm, you know, I'm very fascinated and intrigued and, and might go out and pick this up. So my questions come to this, okay, is like, Why wasn't there a lot more advanced notice of this book, number one? Number two, it's obviously a standalone hardback from Vertigo, which makes me say, does DC have a different, uh, you know, plan business-wise for Vertigo titles that are now going to be adapting well-known popular thrillers and are basically looking at shutting down the average monthly comic book Vertigo line? Is that all working in? Because the news of what they've done to Constantine seems to fit into this new shift in what Vertigo is going to be. Um, I think it's highly possible, simply um, because a lot of Vertigo, the Vertigo books they're putting out now are finite. hmm. You know, with with, uh, the exception of a couple, like maybe unwritten. Um, Unwritten and fables. And fables. There's not a lot of long story vertigo <clears throat> titles out there now. Well, if I could just jump Go in, um, I think it might be a little different because um, I've read some speculation. I can see that what DC may be doing is rather than turn vertigo into adaptations, vertigo is kind of their quote unquote mm-hmm. creator owned line. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And. I can see where there's a certain logic. It's a sick, warped logic, but there's a logic in taking Constantine, who originally showed up in the mainstream DC universe when Alan Moore wrote him, Mm -hmm. um, putting him into a more adult-themed milieu for a while. And now that they're doing the – they're kind of revamping, said, okay, they've got their main comics line – so it makes sense to put Constantine back into that pool. 
And then instead of having characters, they did something similar with Swamp Thing. So it's kind of like, you know, there's the new 52, which is their mainstream superhero line. So what do you do with Vertigo? Well, you can't really, you could shut it down, but that would be a bad idea. Um, and given some of the news that's come out of DC in the past year and some of the fights they've had, I could see where they're they're kind of taking Constantine and one as a way to kind of give certain creators a certain finger. has been a Gonzo Goose production. Pom!